Hello everybody, welcome to our Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Yoon. And there are all sorts of new things relating to the new Avengers project or whatever the hell we're calling it Marvel's now. Marvel's Avengers. Marvel's the we Avengers. We actually call it Marvel's Avengers because Spider-Man PS4 is more identifiable than Marvel's Spider-Man, but Marvel's Avengers is still... Yeah. Because there's no, it's no exclusive thing, so we'll just call it Marvel's Avengers. It's a thing. It makes yeah. it a nightmare to Google for. But point being that there's a whole bunch of footage that came out of V3, and Ewan being the absolute god of comic book things that he is. Professor Frank Gleaven. Yes, had here. a little bit of a scour, and mm -hmm. you found a whole few things that uh, I did. I certainly didn't know. So I'm kind of just going to mine you for information. What have you found? Um, so basically, there are a bunch of stuff in this trailer. I know we probably got all like carried away by how much of a loaf of bread Captain America looks, and what his design <laughs> is, and you know how you know the gameplay kind of gets meshed in with the cutscenes and how it's very hard to discern which is gameplay and what isn't. Mm -hmm. And there are a bunch of story details in this trailer that, that they kind of didn't really focus on, but there's right. some really cool factoids in here. There are some cool villains that the trailer drops uh, and certain little bits of lore that I thought were worth expanding upon. So the first thing we're going to go to is A-Day because A-Day in the trailer doesn't explicitly say it, but in the, in the uh, conversation afterwards, they confirm that A-Day is actually um, the, it's being set up because they're setting up the West Coast Avengers right. in San Francisco. So they're not just going there for a little celebration. They're actually going to the West Coast with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And in the comics, the West Coast Avengers have been going since the 1980s. They okay. were founded by by everyone's favourite Avenger, Hawkeye. Yes, I said that completely. Mr. Missing in Action Hawkeye himself. Yes, um, but yeah, Hawkeye <laughs> actually found that team in the comics. Right. I'm curious because in the trailer, there's a bit where they're on the podium mm -hmm. and there are two figures stood to the left of the Avengers. There's one in a science lab coat mm -hmm. and a woman as well. And I'm curious to see if maybe they're potentially connected to I would say to you as well, involved the way that way. they treat Hawkeye at the minute, either mm -hmm. they don't care that much and mm -hmm. he's not in the main lineup or they care about him more than ever and he's going to get some sort of plot-centric reveal. Yes. We can't have that with the because, Avengers Because uh, Bill Nowadays. Roseman, the vice president of Marvel Games, went on Twitter yesterday to actually say that he hears Hawkeye fans and that he loves them. <laughs> and we should stay tuned. So I think Hawkeye's probably nailed to appear. Okay. The West Coast Avengers, it doesn't necessarily make it clear in the trailer who's leading up this new team, but the fact that they have confirmed that it is the West Coast Avengers they're yeah. founding implies to me that there are more heroes involved in A-Day than it necessarily has let on at this point. Okay, so, so we can pretty much say that there's something Hawkeye related yes. we would assume still yes. to come. Yes, and also the fact that this kind of, I know uh, Josh did a video on a thing that I did yesterday, but it kind of it ties into the whole Spider-Man thing as well, because in Spider-Man PS4, Peter Parker actually mentions that the Avengers are on the West Coast, probably yes. surfing or something. So there's something in there <laughs> as well. So that's kind of really cool. You should uh, go check out our other video on that, yes. because that does corroborate with some things that uh, creative director uh, Brian Benderhar. Brian maybe? Interhar. Interhar. Um, I've come thinking of Brian Michael Bender. Yeah, you are. Um, yes, <laughs> Mr. Interhar said that um, he was in a conversation with Marvel at the beginning of the Spider-Man project, saying that if they could nail the Spider-Man game, that would pretty much be the Iron Man to the mm -hmm. MGU uh, going forward. It's not so. that name, though. I'm going to call it that, it's though. Called, it's called the Marvel Gameiverse now. I'm rolling that forward, Gameiverse. though. Marvel MGU sounds better. Yeah. Uh, next thing up is the actual Terrigen reactor because in the trailer, they don't actually refer to it as mm. that, but again, in the gameplay uh, kind of cutscene segment they gave after they announced the cast yes. uh, between Tony and um, Bruce, they mentioned that the reactor that kind of basically causes San Francisco to turn into a dystopian nightmare mm -hmm. is the Terrigen reactor. Okay. And now that's really cool because in the comics, the Terrigen mists are actually all connected to the Inhumans. Right. And cool. the Inhumans, I know everyone who probably isn't familiar with the comics thinks that they're just this big banter group of people who Terrible had a really, TV really show. bad TV show, but they're actually, they have a massive lore in the comics. They're not as good as the X-Men, so we can forget about the time <laughs> the Marvel tried to replace them, but whatever. Um, it's really all kind of cool because the Terrigen Mists in the comics actually give people powers. Okay. And it's interesting that the reactor here is actually what's powering the helicarrier. Because to me, that implies that Tony Stark has already had at least some contact with the Inhumans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this leads me into my next point, the narrator of the actual trailer itself. Because do you remember the Avengers Project tease that came out a few years ago? Yes. People thought that the person narrating that was Scarlet Witch. Yep. Um, Mainly because of the Age of Ultron connection. Yeah, yeah. But I actually think it's Kamala Khan. Which would make sense. And Kamala Khan is the new Ms. Marvel. She was introduced in 2013. She's a mm -hmm. Pakistani American team. She's a really, really cool superhero. And one of the big identifiable traits of Kamala is that she's a massive fangirl. She absolutely <laughs> loves the Avengers. She mm -hmm. idolizes Carol Danvers in particular, which is why she takes on the name. Mm -hmm. And whenever she interacts with the Avengers, she basically just considers herself a huge super fan. Kind of like Ant Man, I guess, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And in the trailer for this, it's talking about how she got to meet her heroes mm -hmm. at Avengers Day and stuff. And the fact that it's the Terrigen bomb that explodes. And I know that completely renders San Francisco, you know, 
d down the toilet, <laughs> yeah, and car. like loads of people die and go MIA and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if people were given powers as well, and that would give the perfect way of introducing Kamala. Into Plus, this world. Um, for Kamal Khan, she is uh, she her movie's been confirmed as well, yeah, so yeah. she's going to be entering the public consciousness in general. It mm -hmm. kind of makes sense that she would get a, a tie-in reveal in the game, maybe later in the story. Yeah, so that's something that I'm really interested. in. the next thing that I was going to talk about is that when you see after the kind of reformed and, and Mjolnir is taken off of Captain America's mm. memorial, um, you kind of see that there's a little brief montage and that Hulk is fighting the Abomination. Yes. Which is really cool. I mean, I know a lot of people don't care about the Incredible Hulk movie, but mm. the, I actually think the Hulk has one of the more underrated rogues galleries in the Marvel okay. Universe. He has the leader and the Abomination. Give the me Abomin the leader. Yeah, the Abomination is really, really cool. And I love his design. Mm. Like the, the way that he looks here with all the spikes and the talons is very Big kind of- it's very faithful to the comics. Right. But I really like that that we get to, we get confirmation that there's basically going to be loads more villains than this. And mm -hmm. then Black Widow is also fighting off against a robot shortly after. We spent so I long trying to pin this down. Don't know who it is. Like Marvel have no shortage of like megalomaniac evil <laughs> robots. There's Ultron. Uh -huh. There's Ultimo. There's the Super Adaptoid. Yes, that name is a real thing. There's that thing from Thor with the face. Oh, the Destroyer armor. There you go. I don't think maybe a, stuff that shoots could, things. Could be a Doom bot or beast. Yeah. I can't tell what this is. So if anyone watching this knows who the robot is, please let me know because I've basically been staring at a blank wall for the past five hours. Well, pin like, your comment, yeah. you'll win that. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about as well in that break, in that same kind of um, that montage, mm -hmm. is Iron Man's armor because I we see get we get a brief snippet of Iron Man in space and he's yes. wearing an all white armor. Mm -hmm. And m maybe people who have been reading comics recently will recognize that as the Model Fifty armor from the comics. Okay. And this is where things get even more interesting because Iron Man developed the Model Fifty armor, the all white one, in the comics mm -hmm. when he went to San Francisco. Right. Okay. So he did that to kind of monopolize like the tech in San Francisco. There was like an interesting stuff. They were doing on Silicon Valley and like how you know California is the epicenter of like, oh yeah the tech bubble. entrepreneurial tech stuff yes so the fact that that he's wearing that white suit I think maybe that the, they've pulled that together it was an mm. interesting coincidence maybe that he wore that in the comics when it was in San Francisco I and we know that a day is coinciding with San Francisco so I'm wondering if there's going to be more to Tony's inner demons than just necessarily that I like the idea that he because in the the brief clips that we've seen we've seen like long haired sort of disheveled slightly more disheveled Tony Stark mm -hmm. talking to Bruce Banner and kind of realizing if Bruce questions him on did, did he do the maths properly is mm -hmm. this you know do you have some sort of hand in why everything went wrong five year gap like that's after the five year gap so maybe there's something to do with Tony Stark going back to San Francisco embracing a project he had in the works or whatever mm -hmm. and that's where the scene maybe comes from in in the future, he's where he's back in space. Definitely not had a haircut in a while. No, he's very. I'm quite liking the whole dishevelled metal man, yeah. Tony Stark. But, yeah. um, but that was the other thing as well, because during the events of A Day, um, we kind of see Cap get. He heads towards the Terrigen reactor. Yep. The implication is that he's dead. I. The, th the thing is with the Terrigen science, it's very weird. So like in the comics, the Terrigen mists kind of. Like, if you've got inhuman uh, ancestors, mm -hmm. it will give you powers. Okay. If you're an X Man or a mutant, it chances are it's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and awkwardly. Um, and if you've got super soldier serum. Uh, yeah, that's the thing is we don't know what's happened to Cap. And I, I'm very much of the opinion that maybe there is some sort of time travel -y displacement. Something's going on here. Mm. Yeah, I don't think Cap is dead because, you know... To they be can't just kill Cap. To be practical speaking, you have screenshots later in that same footage where yep. they showed, you know, Cap fighting with the Avengers in different scenarios. Mm -hmm. I think it would be very weird if you could only play as Cap in Plus, the opening act of the game. In the, uh, in the conference itself, when they had the creative director or like, a few different staff mm -hmm. members talking about the game, they did say that these were uh, Crystal Dynamics' versions of the characters, hence mm -hmm. the changed faces and whatever. But maybe they've just been given free reign to have fun with what would the Terrigen Mist reactor with a Super Soldier Serum mm. look like, and maybe we'll get some sort of yeah. remixed version of Cap. Um, also, in that same footage, you, for a brief second, you can see Taskmaster. Yes. Taskmaster is the one who fires the initial pulsar wave that so blasts across the uh, yeah the, the skull mask. Yep. The weird thing here is he doesn't look like he does in Spider-Man PS4. Mm. But I'm going to chalk this up to artistic license. Right. Because, you know, we, we see loads of different comics all the time. Characters get redesigned all the mm -hmm. time. I don't necessarily think that, you know, Taskmaster looking different here means that the two things aren't connected. No. If anything, I think it might be connected to that Spider-Man plot thread where he mm. tried to pick up Spidey for a six-figure six salary job thing. Right. And I wonder if it is connected to the, the plan that he had in motion for this. The 
weird elephant in the room with all this um, tied together stuff mm -hmm. is that Spidey's a PS4 exclusive, so they would have to redesign a whole bunch of key elements to get him into the Avengers verse anyway. Yes. Like, even though he's operating, he'd have to look different to get mm -hmm. around whatever deal Sony have set up. Mm -hmm. um, but things do line up, at least in terms of the Easter eggs and the world itself. It makes sense that he would be in here somewhere, maybe share a villain to him. And also, him. we have all those like upcoming PS4 exclusive stuff that's tying into to the Avengers project going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just thought those were like interesting things. Like, we, we know that there are definite, like, established Marvel villains in this trailer. Yes. It wasn't as necessarily secretive as has been led mm -hmm. to believe. I don't know who that big monstrous I was just gonna say, hulking yeah. thing coming out the ground <laughs> is. It could be Fin Fang Foom, you know, the big dragon. Oh, it could be anything. Yeah. I really don't know. <laughs> and I don't know. There's a bit later on as well in the trailer where Thor is on a helicarrier that looks as though it's heading straight for New York. Like another one or something. And he's powering these two engines mm -hmm. to keep them up. Um, but it's, it's very interesting because the Avengers have been outlawed in this universe. It's been five years after the fact mm -hmm. um, and but they, they kind of look like they're going like kind of against the grain and, and going yeah. rogue almost in a way I'm really curious to see how that factors into Taskmaster I want to see what he's involved with because mm -hmm. It, it, speculating his motivations is pretty much impossible because he's been involved in so many different teams over the years. So it's like, I don't know who he's working for, the Cabal, the Thunderbolts, I don't know. Yeah, I barely knew his name until he popped up in Spider Man. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I can't remember that character from a while back. But in terms of like out of public consciousness stuff, pop culture, where the Avengers are at the minute, we mm -hmm. kind of had the whole rogue team capped on doing the underground stuff in the mm -hmm. Avengers. Obviously, came full circle in Endgame. Um, but this game would have been conceptualized and being put together when that was the, the current thread in the movies. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's something there that they can tap back into yeah. in terms of what people expect. But the main thing is like Terrigen Mists yep. because you know that's really that's really interesting because the Inhumans I think the narrator is definitely a deliberate choice I wouldn't be surprised I, hope that is Kamala I would not be surprised if it was Kamala mm -hmm. leading into the whole fangirly aspect and also <laughs> the Terrigen bomb mm -hmm. I don't think Cap's dead no. I think Abomination and Taskmaster are our first two big clues mm -hmm. of where this is heading and I really want to know who who Black Widow is fighting in this because I couldn't <laughs> make it out like it, it, it like they're a black and blue robot with like yeah. veins in their face it's very weird. I'm going to throw a prediction that it's something related to Wakanda just for the crack because I think that costume reminded me a little bit of Black Panther's costume. Mm -hmm. But let us know what you think down in the comments below. What did you find and what are you excited about? For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com. I've been Ewan from whatculture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. We're disassembling? Yeah. This is... This is...